on the woman he's been involved with. He refers to her as his baby mama. And apparently she told him, like, no, that's my cousin. We do this in the islands. Everybody sleeps together naked in the islands. And he was no dummy. He didn't go for it. (laughs) So uh, I don't suspect you should go for it either. Shonda writes, I really wish Worldstar would go away. These videos are ridiculous. (laughs) Uh, It's not for everybody. I feel you on that, Shonda. It's not for everybody. It's, It's not for everybody. It's not. But, you know, listen, here's the reality. People call that stuff ratchet. It's a reflection of real life and real real relationships. It it really is. It's no different. People are dealing with that every day, right? Somebody right now is dealing with that. I guarantee you, somebody inside the city, right, maybe in the chat, is dealing with that ish right now. That's real life. That's real life. Here's some more real life. Not everyone has a car. I know people who have cars, they, they get a sort of like a, they sort of take it for granted. They really do. As do people who are given anything. But if you live in the city of Cincinnati, you have to remember that while you might be mobile, while you can go from mall to mall, go to work, go home, do whatever you're doing, and do all of this by in your motor vehicle, not everyone has that. So a lot of people have to use the bus. They have to use public transit. And I hope that just somehow that this program can either be saved or these in, and or these individuals can be served. But from what I'm reading, there is a program that provides low cost or free bus fare for some of the city's lowest income residents. And it's in danger of disappearing. Everybody rides Metro. Apparently, they work with about 100 social service providers in the area to make sure that about 30,000 low-income individuals have access to transit so they can get the jobs or the grocery store or take their children to the doctor, take themselves to their doctor, wherever they need to go, you know, important places. But apparently, the nonprofit is facing a loss of a lot of money from the federal government. And they're not really sure if they're going to be able to sustain a program. Come on now. There's got to be something that the city can do. There's got to be something. I'm saying we need as many avenues of of public transit as we can sustain. Okay, we need multiple avenues. But that's just horrible. And listen, for folks who drive, like if you're car-centric and you drive, like you've got your own automobile, it's something you don't even think about. You don't even think about it. And that's the way, you know, most things are for people that, you know, they get used to certain things. I get it. I understand it. But are you aware of that? What the what will be the impact to the city? Will they be an impact to the city, in your opinion? Uh, you tell me. Do you know of anyone who might be, you know, using this this program? Uh, Daryl Rice, I agree, Nate. To go 12-4 and in the regular season and to lose a wild card game at home against a team they played twice already and who has some significant injuries, the Bengals are some straight bums, and I can't get down with them no more. Well, I feel you, (laughs) Daryl. I feel you, Daryl. I don't equate, like, suffering, you know, like they say in Cleveland, like they're suffering because they don't have a sports championship. Like, that's the narrative coming from the sports world, right? And I understand the sports world is going to be sports-centric, but that's some damn nonsense. You got half the adult population in Cleveland doesn't have a job. But yet, Cleveland's worried about a sports championship. Are you kidding me, homie? You talk about misplaced priorities. I've wondered the same thing about the city of Cincinnati. To me, it's sports entertainment. I love to see the investment for all my friends. Man, every single year, my little brother gets on a bandwagon. Every single year. And I'm like, is he joking? Is he serious? Every year. You see them boys out there. And every year for the last few years has always been the same. More highs than lows during the regular season. Overinflates the expectation for the postseason. And then a big letdown. Hey, only one team's win the championship. But... The next step for the Cincinnati Bengals is to win at least one game. Other than that, and it just, uh, what are we doing here, folks? Other than that, it just doesn't matter. 
many people are chiming in uh, on my Facebook page. <laughs> uh, uh, so the rights, why put her out there? Because nine times out of ten, he'll be back with her anyway. Plus, you humiliate your children for a lifetime. I agree. I agree. She's the mother of your child. She ain't going nowhere. You guys got to negotiate this. You got to work this out uh, together. <laughs> I, I posted also a link of a mother who marches through Target with her family. She's literally got the Bible in her right hand above her head. She's got three or four children who are behind her. And she's just shouting down people inside a Target because of their policy. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, is that God's work now? Is God going to favor you? Are you going to get like a, a two bedroom now? up from an efficiency you upgrade it now when you get to heaven what is the point of all of this live and let live people if you missed it though it's on my facebook page you can check it out for yourself Uh, check it out is this the cleveland cavaliers year do you believe that this is the year that that lebron james brings home of course it's only been two years now last year and this year but is this the year that cleveland gets their championship is this cleveland cavaliers year I believe the team is playing better than it has all in a long time, much better than last year because you got all your pieces. Everybody's blazing and hitting records amounts of three-pointers during the game. Is this the Cavs' year? <laughs> you tell me. Uh, either way, tonight, if you're an NBA fan or you're into that kind of sports entertainment, it all gets kicked off. I think the Cavs are going to play Thursday, and then it's kind of going to be like an every-other-night thing. Uh, Tonight, you've got OKC versus the uh, Golden State Warriors. OKC, of course, stands for Oklahoma City Thunder. And everyone's looking forward to that. That's going to be great. (laughs) Shannon writes, ha ha, a two-bedroom in heaven. You crack me up. Right. I mean, these religious folks think that. And that's why I started thinking maybe the whole concept of hell and heaven is kind of like a credit score. Like when you do good things then G-O-D puts a little bit on your good credit. And of course, when you do bad things, then he takes it away. And when you die, you've got to have a certain credit score in order to qualify for heaven. Is that what it is? Uh, Because nobody really knows. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, You tell me. Because I don't understand these people who feel the need to project their religiosity onto the entire world. I don't feel the same way you feel, okay? Okay. I'm not all upset about transgender bathrooms. Well, I don't think it's going to be an avalanche. I really don't. I think you. Can, this is not going to make transgender people start like going to Target more. I don't believe so. This is not going to make transgender individuals come out of the closet and be who they are. It, it's not going to change anything, actually. Uh, Demi writes, I don't understand all the boycotting people are, are doing of Target. Just shop there or don't. I'm with you. And good morning, Demi. Uh, Rhonda writes, I think about public transportation, even though I have a car, because I don't want all the people I know who don't have a car to call me for rides. <laughs> Is that right? Oh, uh, that's funny. Just say no. You ain't getting no damn ride today. Simple as that. Yeah, I'm with you, Demi. I don't understand it either. If you work in Target and you're like at the cash register or you're stocking or whatever, uh, No. Uh, Tiffany writes, the Cavs play Raptors tomorrow night, 8.30 ESPN. Yes, all the games are at 8.30, Eastern and Western Conference, I believe. And that is tomorrow night. Tonight, you got OKC versus Warriors. And I don't care who wins, quite honestly. I just want to see some good sports entertainment. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Uh, I got another clip for you. This is of uh, Barack Obama. Give me one second here to pull it up. And he was doing the commencement at Rutgers, okay? Uh, Just to give you some idea of what's going on. Uh, We'll put that uh, there. Okay, just to give you an idea of what's going on. And he calls out, he appears to call out something that really I think is pervasive throughout the political system. But check this out. If you were listening to today's political debate, you might wonder where 
this strain of anti-intellectualism came from. So, so, so class of 2006. And a lot of people said he was talking about Donald Trump. He went on to make other comments about apparently the Republican Party. Anti-intellectualism. I thought that was interesting. So now he wants to talk about anti-intellectualism. And back during the midterm, he was talking about Pookie. <laughs> during the, that, that was his flow for black America. Go get Pookie off the couch. And now he wants to talk about anti-intellectualism. I had to make that point. Come on now. <laughs> Something doesn't make any sense here. Hey, listen, folks, this show will be made available as a podcast immediately following the end of the show this morning. You can find it on my website, 3Ws.NathanIVEY.com. Tell a friend we're doing two hours every morning from 7 a.m. until 9 a.m. Okay, take care of yourself. Uh, I will be on Facebook. I'll be monitoring social media throughout the day. So if you'd like to connect with me, I'm real easy to find. You can go to my website and just go to the contact page. And it'll give you everything you know on uh, how to connect with me throughout the day. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you. I really do. And we'll be back tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. for much more. Much more. And I'll be posting things on my pay- Facebook page throughout the day so we can stay, uh, continue to be interactive. Some folks are asking for, well, I think I already got it. Yeah, I need put that up there. Uh, on Twitter if they're looking for a copy where can they find a link to the video about the young woman in Tacoma it's on my Facebook page check it out Washington teen sues cop who dragged her off a bike and choked her at a mall and people are already uh, chiming in listen thank you very much we'll be back tomorrow morning at 7am until then I'm Nathan Ivey and I'm out